At this moment, we are discussing the pipeline operations, and uh, we will name again the main types of pipeline. Also, I will provide few comments about each of uh, type of pipeline operations, and uh, we will watch uh, the movie concentrated on pipeline process. So, generally, dedicated lay barges or pipeline vessels have laid the majority of offshore oil and gas pipelines. The commonest method of installation is on board construction of the pipeline by means of the set of welding sections of the pipe string. The vessel moves forward as the pipeline descends to the seabed in an S curve partly supported by a stinger, and tension of the pipe discharged through the stinger is measured, and uh, normally it takes about half an hour to weld one sew or uh, to make one welding step. I mean, uh, we are working with uh, 12 meters uh, dimension of pipe, and we call it single join. Or sometimes we weld the two pieces of 12 in 24 and then 24 we connect to the set of pipe at the stinger or to the main line and we call it double join. Also there are other methods of pipe laying as uh, G-lay which is used for deep water operations and a relay or drum lay where the pipe is uh, pre-constructed at the shore factory and the reel the board the vessel. The pipe is constructed in a linear pipe fabrication facility called the firing line. Pipe is brought up from hold storage and is prepared for fabrication and welding. As uh, you understood, often we have 12 meter pipe lengths, uh, which are welded into 24 meter double joints prior to arrival at the firing line. In the firing line, a number of stages of welding take place, both externally and internally within the pipeline. Each operation is conducted at a station. After welding process, the further X-ray checking should be done, and then anti-corrosion coating and weight coating, all of that is necessary. Each station is equipped with a button controlling indicator lamp. When all the buttons at each station have been pressed, a green line shows on the DP bridge and the DPO initiates a move ahead, a distance equivalent to the joint length. Once the move ahead has been completed, the firing line operations continue. It is essential that tension be maintained on the pipeline and the continuous communication process and line are monitored and established. At the back end of the firing line, the pipe is controlled by a number of pipe tensioners. This consists of set of caterpillar tracks clumping the pipe either top and bottom or side located. The tensioners control the movement of the pipe, maintaining a set tension on the pipe string. The pipe is supported aft of the firing line by the stinger, which is an open lattice gantry extending beyond the stern of the vessel, stopping downwards. The stinger contains a number of sets of support rollers adjusted and positioned to support the pipe in the area known as overbend. The tension on the pipe helps to reduce the likelihood of pipe buckle at this point. The pipe takes up a canary profile or sag bend between the end of the stinger and the seabed. The set tension is to ensure a smooth transition from the unsupported sag bend to the touchdown point on the seabed. If tension is lost, then the damage will occur at the touchdown area and the pipe will have to be recovered for repair. It can be seen that pipe tension is an all-important factor in the lay operation.
pipe tension values are communicated to the DP system by means of load cells incorporated in the tensioners. The DP system is continuously working with this external force using thrust power to maintain the tension. Now guys, let's watch the subject movie about pipelining and after that I summarize the information about different types of uh, pipelining methods. So let's summarize and the last statements about each type of pipe laying are providing right now. S lay. A pipe laying operation may be with a lay down adjustment to a fixed platform. It may happen that the pipeline aid is simply being laid down within a specified box or area on the seabed or it might be necessary to carry out a pull-in to a J-tube or similar. This is like an explorer tube through which we can send the pipe to the platform or uh, to any offshore structure. If the operation involves a J-tube pull-in, the J-tube will have already been installed on the platform and a pull-in wire will be rigged through it. A pull-in winch will be fitted on the platform to handle the job. The vessel will position itself in the correct location, lined up with the end the correct distance from the J-tube. The end of the pipe is fitted with a pull head, to which can be shackled the pull wire, which is passed across from the platform by messenger or crane hook. The platform pull-in winch takes the load onto the pipe tensioners and the pipe and, and moves out from the vessel down to the J-tube. Once the mating is complete, the vessel can start to move ahead, laying pipe as she goes. During the pipe laying operations, the vessel will be moving ahead under DP control in steps equal to the joint lengths, often those are like 24 meters. The DPO must be provided with effective position reference at all times. Some of the surface and subsea references are not suitable 
due to the distances traveled by the vessel and the limited range available. Dual DGPS is a common facility backed by two towed wires. Should it be necessary to abandon the lay operation due to such as adverse weather, then the procedure is to use the abatement and recovery winch. A temporary lay-down head is welded to the end of the pipe to which it is attached and this abandoned and recovery winch supplied with the wire. This is passed down the stringy maintaining tension with the abandoning and recovering winch just as if it was pipe being laid. The end of the pipe may be laid on the seabed and the abandoning and recovery wire slaked off. The vessel may then weather vane and ride out the storm with the wire still attached but kept slack or alternatively the wire may be buoyed off. It depends of the strength of the weather conditions and wave height. Few words about G-Lay. If the water depth is greater, unacceptable stresses and strain levels can be imposed on the pipe during the overbend stage. This can be avoided by using the G-Lay technique. In G-Lay operations, the stinger is configured as a tower angled between the vertical and up to 20 degrees from the vertical. Pipe lengths are pre-jointed into triple or quadruple joints before being raised to the vertical for welding onto the pipe string. Relay. This type of operation varies from those described in that the pipe string is uh, prefabricated in one length at a shore base factory. The vessel loads the pipeline straight from the factory, spooling it onto its reel or carousel. The lay ramp is used to guide the pipe onto the drum and if the pipe is a rigged steel construction, it is pre-reduced onto the reel. This configuration is commonly used for the lay of the flexible pipelines. In these cases, the lay spread may be mobilized onto any suitable vessel for the duration of the contract.